So my name's uh, Erhard Grave. I'm a PhD student at the MIT Center for Civic Media at the MIT Media Lab. Uh, I do a lot of case studies of kind of new forms of civic and political work around the world. And I've come to this question of how should we best be thinking about the goals of designing those tools? And for me, it always comes back to how do we actually express ourselves as citizens and grow to express ourselves in ways that make ourselves more effective. You know, there are the ways to think about how we, um, how we address specific problems, but I'm really interested in that growth question. You know, because we look at civic education as a space that, you know, is, is different in, in mature democracies versus uh, emerging democracies, but is really, uh, you know, kind of fallen way behind in terms of what's necessary to effectively participate in contemporary democracy. And so I think there's an opportunity with civic tech to think about how we put civic education into the center of the design work. And we should think about how our research can serve that purpose. So it starts with this guy. Um, is, is he a slacktivist or is he what um, uh, Lance Bennett calls an actualizing citizen, right? Um, so slacktivism, who has heard of the term slacktivism? Good, good, you're at the right conference. Uh, so slacktivism, you know, as, uh, as one critic, Yevgeny Morozov talks about it, it's, it's something that, you know, makes you feel good for doing it, but doesn't necessarily have a major impact in the world. Uh, there's another critique that uh, uh, was earlier by uh, Michael White, who was actually a uh, person who was the editor of Adbusters, one of the people that helped coordinate Occupy Wall Street. He refers to this as collectivism, and his fear is that it's actually going to distract many of the participants from doing real world important work, the kind of stuff that builds social movements. And so, you know, the, the other option is for this, this person who's, who's doing his work online is he's possibly this actualizing citizen, which is using a new repertoire of digital tools and behaviors in order to work with others online, often through um, more uh, non-hierarchical network-based distributed organizations, uh, often working through uh, kind of issue-based activism, so they get really passionate about one thing and dive really deep on that, and that's what holds their attention to it as they kind of engage with other groups online. Um, but I think this is a core motivating question for, for my work, and I think for a lot of us at the conference. The other thing that's motivating uh, my interest in, in putting this on the table today is uh, this question of the participation gap, which is just completely upset, uh, I've been obsessed with since uh, Henry Jenkins and his team published it back in 2006. And this was this idea that in a moment where lots of people are engaging online through participatory culture, that is they're making media, they're sharing that media with each other, and that's how a lot of social engagement happens, um, and that's how we develop our identities, that's also the space in which we're doing our civic work. And if you don't have uh, kind of a, a really high quality set of skills to make that media, share that media, engage online, uh, then you are going to be a second class citizen. You are going to not have the skills necessary to fully engage um, in 21st century democracy. And, and I have a, I have, I'm very concerned about this. It's a new form of digital divide. And so it brings us to this question of what should civic learning look like and how does the technology and media that we use and how it's designed play into that. So we have um, this framework that comes from Westheimer and Kahn. These are education scholars. Um, and they gave us uh, some empirical data on how different types of civic education create different types of citizens. And so they have these personally responsible citizens. These are folks that you know, go out and vote. They have a kind of patriotic duty to you know, be good in their community. They follow laws and follow the rules. And that's how they define their citizenship. You have these participatory citizens. These are folks that are kind of like the ones that organize the, uh, the food drive, right? They're the ones that really see their expression of citizenship uh, through activating others and, and seeing that as, as, as an important role that they play. And then these justice-oriented folks um, are really looking at this kind of systemic view of society, like what are the core systemic problems that are causing all of the issues that society is having, and how do we root those out? And so they often have uh, a bit more bias towards social justice work, um, and a lot more, and, and a bias toward activist type efforts uh, to try and make people aware of these systemic problems. Now we don't need everybody to be all of these, 
That's one of the important things that, that they don't talk about explicitly in that paper, but I think we've learned is that we need all three types of these citizens and we each play each of those citizens depending on the issue and the moment in our lives. And so I don't want to talk about civic education as achieving a particular ideal or civic learning going toward a particular type of citizen that comes out from being that user of your system. However, that they have some combination of skills that allow them uh, to, to be effective. And so I think uh, one of the important things to keep in mind is that we've needed to redefine what it means to participate in contemporary democracy. Um, Joe Kahn, who was also the co-author in that previous paper, has been doing this work with Kathy Cohen and others as part of the Youth and Participatory Politics Network founded by MacArthur Foundation. They've put this definition on the table for talking about the way youth are engaging now in these kind of interactive peer-based acts um, and that a lot of it is how they have voice and influence. And so it's, it's about getting to that point where they have the, the skills, experience, sense of self-efficacy necessary to have that voice and influence, but through these kind of means by which they're engaging with others, both online and offline in a very active way, there's a preference by young people for that type of work. And we need to keep that in the back of our minds as we're designing for civic learning. So we need a definition of civic learning. We need a framework to start with here. Um, and I'm actually borrowing one um, from Juliet Mer Merrifield. So she's, a she's a researcher at IDS. Um, in Brighton many years ago, and she wrote this paper in 2001 where she kind of laid out civic learning in terms of knowledge, abilities, and dispositions. So in terms of knowledge, we're talking not just about like, I know who my governor is, and I know, who, I know how my system of government works, right? These kind of traditional forms of uh, civic education in a mature democracy. It's much more about, you know, I, uh, I'm aware of all of these tools that could be used. I'm aware of different theories of change that could be involved. And I have a set of experiences that are part of my knowledge and inform a set of heuristics, perhaps, that I use when I choose how to act and how to engage with others. Then that overlaps with abilities, right? So abilities is this, is, is not just skills, but it's anything that you can do in order to make change, any way that you're contributing toward that type of effort. Um, and so she, she defines it very broadly, which, which I think is, is very smart. And then dispositions, these are our values. These are our morals, kind of our understanding of the ethical codes and norms in society, as well as our sense of efficacy. You know, and there's been a lot of history um, in the political science literature looking at political um, self-efficacy and how that can be a determinant of civic engagement. And so it's really important for us to understand how young people have that innate sense of self-efficacy um, and how we might try and instill that in them through the designs that we create. Um, now, of course, you need all three. You need some combination of all three of these in order to get to that effective citizenship uh, bit. And so we need to be thinking about how we, how we study and map um, and, and work toward each of these. Well, uh, Juliet has some suggestions on how we do this. Um, she thinks it's really important that we help people acquire new knowledge um, by linking it to their existing uh, knowledge by emphasizing practicing democracy and not just talking about it, and by emphasizing problem solving, being self aware about your problem solving processes. There's a lot of active work here in terms of developing a set of experiences that you can rely on in your knowledge. So we should be thinking about how we're designing for that and how we're and how we're um, recording those types of experiences that people might have on different platforms. In terms of abilities, a lot of this is about creating opportunities um, to engage with uh, difference, um, to, uh, to, to try and, uh, and find different ways to, to go deep on certain subjects or see connections across other ones. And then for the folks that are new to this, make sure that there's some scaffolding in place. And we do this already with a lot of the tools that we build, right? We give them some onboarding process such that they understand how the thing works. Um, and then from there, they can more effectively use that tool. And then one of the big ones for me is this deeper self-reflection question. This is how we close the loop on a lot of these things, is you learn when you reflect on the practice that you just had. And there's a lot of good literature on how you know, practice and reflection is how we actually get to a point where we can be effective whatever it is that we're doing. Um, and so it's an interesting question of how we design for reflection. Um, and then disposition, once again, this is about coming up with different uh, opportunities for seeing difference in cultural expression and seeing how all of those things might come up with different values and how we might see ourselves uh, expressing civics uh, in, in different ways and with different audiences. 
So the challenge I'm putting to all of you here is that however you want to map civic tech, you should be thinking about how we could put civic learning at the center of it. <coughs> how each of those could be the design goals by which we optimize our platforms for and think about our research such that we're informing an iterative process of getting better and better at helping users evolve into more effective citizens. It's going to take some methods uh, to do this research well, and of course it's going to take all the methods, uh, because the only way to really understand this is to see it from all angles. We need these longitudinal case studies to understand how that learning happens over time. Um, so we need some, some measurement tools that allow us to do that. And that includes these type of psychometric evaluations, these kind of surveys with, uh, with validated um, measures that we can scale across our platforms and understand um, how we're actually growing in terms of efficacy, in terms of, uh, of pieces of knowledge and experiences that, pe that people are gaining. But we need to inform that also with ethnographic insights. So we have to be doing the kind of in-depth interviews that help us understand the way people are thinking through each of these uh, aspects of their civic and political work, right? So this is the, this is the question of, it's not just, I am, uh, you know, I'm feeling particularly efficacious today, right? Like, I feel like I could change government. That's, that's often a, a version of that is the question that we ask people in these surveys. But we need to go a little bit deeper and see how that might be situated in a particular culture or in a particular context in which they're engaging. So they might be doing that at a local level versus a national level or an emerging democracy versus a mature democracy, and those have different ways that they're uh, expressed. And then once we get to that point where we have these kind of validated tools, we need to be doing that pre and post test and randomizing when possible to really understand, you know, do we have causal mechanisms in place that, are, that, are, that we're learning through? So I have not done all this. I'm gonna be upfront about this. Like this is an ideal. Um, and I'm, that's why I'm putting it forward to you as a challenge. Um, I, would, I would like to highlight, especially for the folks that are working on video games here, that, that I've been particularly inspired by the work of Valerie Shute, um, who's been developing the stealth assessment uh, approach. She is a very, very skilled psychometrician. Um, and she's been thinking about how she can instrument video games to understand the way that young people are gaining these types of knowledge, experiences, and sense of confidence or whatever as they're um, proceeding through the games. So how can we actually, in she's thinking, how do we instrument those games and actually understand through the log analysis and have that connected to you know, a factor analysis for these underlying um, uh, factors that we care about in civic learning to actually say we can track this progress over time because that's the ideal, I think, for the platforms that we're trying to build if we can get to that point. So here's my small little contribution of trying to put this in practice. Uh, so this is a tool that I've been developing for uh, the past couple of years with my colleagues at the Center for Civic Media. Um, I highly recommend that you go to my colleague Rahul Bargov's talk later today. Uh, he helped me build this tool, and he's also really smart about data storytelling, which I'll be talking about later. So the story I was trying to tell uh, for folks that were using this app was, okay, if you are walking through your community, what, if, what would happen if you got a notification on your smartphone that said just nearby there was an issue up for public debate, or there was some problem in the infrastructure that's been reported, and we'd like you to check up on that and tell us, is that still a problem? And so we build a system that would do that, essentially uh, ingest a bunch of what's called geofenced um, items, and as you walked within that geofence, it would send you a push notification, invite you to update the status of that issue, and then you'd be following that issue going forward as you know, kind of a co-owner of that, of that aspect of, of collaborative governance in your local community. So we're trying to tie people to their community and trying to find that easy way of engagement, right? Because we're often thinking about how we lower that cost of engagement when we're building that civic technology. So this is my way of lowering that cost to participating directly in some sort of, of uh, governance project. So I, uh, I had some goals in this. I had the classic number one goal of let's increase quantity and quality of engagement. Uh, I, I did not test that. Uh, the, I, you know, the deployments that you do with a prototype like this are never going to really achieve that. You can't do uh, that because you don't have any baseline analysis. And most of the projects in civic tech, um, you know, I'm looking at all of you in, the, in this room, uh, most of them are what the education scholars would call design-based research. It is something that has no precedent. It is designed to achieve a particular ideal um, that you're creating for the first time ever. 
Um, and then you're trying to see how people respond to that, right? And so the goal for this is trying to think how we get beyond that in these research methods. So I, I was at least able to do some work to think about how they increase the knowledge of the city and increase sense of efficacy by asking them in interviews um, how they actually thought through this. So I did a deployment back in November in New Haven in partnership with C-Click Fix. Um, so they are a major civic tech company that focuses on collaborative governance work. Um, so these are like the pothole uh, you know, submissions or the broken light fixtures. Um, this is a map of all of the reports that my users um, responded to across the city uh, during the week that they were using it. I had 14 folks, um, and so I asked them these questions in, in, in a follow-up interview. So like, like I'll talk quickly about my methods. I, ha I was doing, uh, capturing any time they clicked on the app um, and tagging that with time and, uh, and location. But that only helps me in that test to see whether or not they're doing the behaviors that I expect them to do. Right? I haven't gotten to a point where I can tie that to any psychometric qualities of, of underlying civic learning goals. Um, and so what I start with are these kind of qualitative aspects. So in these follow-up interviews where I kind of, you know, do these in-depth discussions with the folks, I asked them, how did using ActiveFact make you feel? And the one thing that, that, that rose to the top was that it made them feel connected. And I think that this is a, this is a really important point, that there are ways that you can uh, design your interface that make you feel connected not only to the city, but to other people that are doing this work. Um, and Secret Fix is very good about that because it has this community that are all doing that and you get an awareness through, through the app that I created of, oh wow, somebody reported this right on my street, right? And here they are, um, this is their name and this is how long ago they did it. Did it change how you viewed the city was my other big question. 12 out of 14 said yes, which is a really good finding for me. That suggests that I'm on the right track, uh, that I'm actually contributing some sort of knowledge um, and helping them have a broader understanding of their city. And I got these great quotes. Um, so like one person said it changed their understanding fundamentally, that there are zones, pockets of problems and personalities, personalities being like the people that report these things, that there is, there's actually this layer of people um, uh, in the city that are contributing to this work. Another person was surprised at how much had been reported and was still open. It opened their eyes to the problems that were affecting their city, that they didn't realize the magnitude of them. Um, and they didn't realize that you know, like this was affecting their own personal uh, parts of the city. What was also interesting is she said, she said I feel, although I don't see how my comments matter. So when she was updating her status, she was reflecting that on her own sense of efficacy, right? And she was saying, actually, I don't see the way that this interface is structured, how I'm making a difference on this. And that's a really important from my point. If I'm trying to optimize for these goals of civic learning, this is telling me that I'm missing something, that I'm not closing that loop. Um, and then back to this connection point, right? Which is someone else caring about this issue makes you care about it. These are core ways to inform your design approach to thinking about civic learning um, as that ultimate goal. And so I wanna kind of put this challenge to all of you to think about how exactly are our users evolving. I think that in terms of addressing some of these questions around uh, slacktivism versus you know, evolving into, into effective citizens and addressing these uh, questions of the participation gap and whether or not we're scaffolding kind of those learning experiences into the tools we're building such that they're growing in a way that's making them as effective. It's, a, it's, a, it's an equity issue. I think that can be best addressed perhaps if we create this framework for putting civic learning at the heart of our design goals and our research goals for civic tech. So. I invite you to be a part of that.